Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl funny lungo back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu and on this channel we post reaction videos each and every day. So if there's something in particular that you guys want us to react to, let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below and we'll do it for you. You can check out our second YouTube channel called Fanny and Jesse 2.0, our podcast diving in with Fanny and Jesse and Patreon Fanny and Jesse all everything is in the description box and just feel free to click, click the links and enjoy the content that we're putting out there. Uh, I hope you guys are doing alright and may you stay blessed. So today I'm reacting to 10 Muslim scholars who left Christianity. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Everyone's life journey is unique and sometimes that includes leaving one religion and becoming a devout follower of another one. In this episode, we're looking at 10 Muslim scholars who joined Islam after Christianity. Welcome back guys to another FTD Facts episode. My name is Leroy Kenton and one thing to mention before I jump into this episode is that for the most part, when I refer to Christianity, I'll be referring to it in the general sense and also Islam, I'll be referring to that in the general sense as well. I won't always be mentioning the specific branch or the school of thought of these two religions. But with that said, let's jump into this episode. Starting at number 10, we have Bilal Phillips. Dr. Abu Amina Bilal Phillips is a Jamaican-Canadian Islamic scholar who converted to Islam in the early 70s. Shortly after becoming a Muslim, he then began a journey to seek Islamic knowledge. That journey then took him to Saudi Arabia where he completed a bachelor's in arts in Islamic studies in Medina and also an MA in Islamic theology in Riyadh. Then he went to the University of Wales, UK, where he completed a PhD in Islamic theology in the early 1990s. When you look at the consequences, besides the fabrication of Hadith, Number nine brings us Yusuf Estes. Sheikh Yusuf Estes is an American Muslim preacher as well as a teacher and he had converted from Christianity to Islam in the year 1991. And this was after meeting a Muslim man when he was in Egypt. He was a Muslim chaplain for the United States Bureau of Prisons from 1994 up until the year 2000. And also he was a Muslim delegate to the United Nations World Peace Conference for Religious Leaders that was held at the UN in September 2000. Now what he does is he works to share the religion of Islam as well as he hopes to share the correct message with the youth, new Muslims as well as others in very simple English terms. He also tries to make the religion of Islam as well as the Quran as understandable as possible. All of us are susceptible to people telling us stuff from the time we're born. We don't know. I'm a little kid, I'm born and I come into the world and people start telling me stuff. Who's the person I'm going to trust the very most? Khalid Yassin is next. Ooh. Sheikh Khalid Yassin is what is known as a da'i. And this is basically somebody who speaks publicly about the Islamic faith in order to really inspire the spiritual and moral conscience of the listeners. Or also to just educate and inform people about the Islamic faith. He was born in Brooklyn, New York, and he learned to speak about inequality. Now, he grew up in foster homes from the age of three, along with some of his siblings up until the age of 15 years old. He describes each of these foster homes as having a different Christian denomination. So he actually covered a lot of different denominations of Christianity growing up. Prior to his conversion to Islam, he was a gang member as well, and he converted to Islam in the year 1965. God sent a prophet from among the Bani Israel. All the prophets came from a designated group of people. The scholar at number seven Whoa. is Yusha Evans. Now this man, Yusha Evans, was born and raised in Greenville, South Carolina in the United States into a very conservative Christian family. Now during his early teens, he was really involved in the church and that church is called Young Life, which is a non-denominational organization centered around the youth. And he actually had intentions of becoming a preacher. But later he converted to the religion of Islam in December of 1998 and Yusha, which comes from the name Joshua, he currently travels all around the world as a lecturer as well as a caller to Islam and he also teaches workshops depending on where he is in different parts of the world. Muslims, who I thought were the worst people on earth, could have the right religion. That was just something my brain was not ready to 
you know, to comprehend. Hamza Youssef is at number six. Hamza Youssef was born as Mark Hansen in Washington, and he grew up as a Greek Orthodox Christian. Now, in the year 1977, after a near-death experience in a car accident and then reading the Quran for himself, he converted from Christianity to Islam. Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, he spent two decades studying with the scholars over in the Middle East as well as different parts of Africa. And after returning to the United States, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, he co-founded what is known as the Zaytona College. And this is America's first accredited Muslim liberal arts college. And it's based in California. All right, everybody. So we just saw five scholars that were Christian and then converted to Islam. We have five more to go before we get into those be sure to leave a like on this episode it really helps support our ftd facts episodes it helps more people see them and also if this is your first time here to the channel hit that subscribe button and ring the bell that way you'll be notified of our daily episodes you get to learn every single day about our world the different cultures countries people religions so if those topics interest you be sure to stick around here at ftd facts and join us on our road to 1 million subscribers and beyond. All right, guys, so let's get back into this episode. At number five, we have the scholar Abdul Rahim Green. Abdul Rahim Green was born in 1962 in Tanzania to a British father and a Polish mother. And he grew up as a Roman Catholic. Now, fast forward to the year 1987, after struggling with his Roman Catholic upbringing, as well as also practicing Buddhism for a short time, believe it or not, Abdul Rahim Green, he began his journey to Islam. Islam and he officially converted in the year 1988. He soon became a regular at the popular speaker's corner in Hyde Park over in London and that's where he practiced Dawa, which is a call to Islam and that was done on a regular basis. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is khatam al nabiyin He is the seal of the messengers. So that responsibility falls upon us. Scholar number four is Hamza Andreas Sortsiz and he's a Muslim convert of Greek descent as well as he's the author of the Divine Reality, God, Islam and the Mirage of Atheism. He's a well-known public speaker as well as an instructor and he has a master's and a postgraduate certificate certificate in philosophy from the University of London. Hamza has studied Islamic thought and theology under qualified scholars and he's delivered various different workshops as well as different courses and an accredited diploma course on topics related to Islamic thought as well as Islamic philosophy. Almost at the end of this episode, number three brings us Suhaib Webb. Now, Suhaib Webb was born William Webb into a Christian family and his grandfather was also a Christian preacher. But as time went on before he converted to Islam and long before he was considered a Muslim cleric actually, Imam Suhaib Webb lost complete interest in any religion. He became a street gangster, specifically a member of the Bloods gang, and he also became a hip hop DJ and a producer. But after converting to Islam, he founded SWISS, which stands for the Suhaib Webb Institute of Sacred Sciences. And this, by the way, is an Islamic educational experience that uses multiple teaching methods in a structured curriculum so that people can build their Islamic literacy. Only two more scholars to look at. And number two brings us Dr. Lawrence B. Brown. Born as a Christian American up until his conversion to Islam in April of 1994, Dr. Brown was definitely somebody that anyone looking in would say like, well, yeah, he's living the stereotypical American dream. He's a graduate from two Ivy League universities and he also served as a respected ophthalmologist in the United States Air Force for eight years. Now, after a personal miracle where his daughter's life was saved, Dr. Brown changed his focus to religious studies and he ended up in the religion of Islam. And finally, our scholar number one in this episode is Nuha Mim Keller. He's an Islamic scholar, teacher, as well as an author. Nuha Mim Keller studied philosophy and Arabic at the University of Chicago and the University of California, Los Angeles. He converted to Islam from Roman Catholicism in the year 1977. Now, on top of teaching Sufism, which is like the spiritual inner dimension of Islam, 
He has also written several books and articles on a wide range of subjects. And probably one of the most prominent of his works to this very date is The Reliance of the Traveler. And by the way, that's an annotated English translation of the Umdat al-Salik, which is a Shafi'i legal work by Ahmad ibn Naqib al-Misri. It contains over 6,000 legal rulings as well as it was the first English translation of an Islamic legal work to be certified by the al Azhar university all right guys so that's it for me that's all i have for you in this episode this was a look at 10 muslim scholars that left the religion of christianity really hope you guys found this video insightful informative um and be sure to let me know your thoughts and comments down below and again this video isn't to talk down to any religion or any religious belief for that matter but rather we just wanted to highlight some individuals who change their religions as they continue to study more and more. We've done a video similar to this with Muslims who left and joined Christianity. So I'll probably have that as an annotation at the end screen of this episode if you missed that one. Either way, there's gonna be some similar videos that you can check out below in the video description section or in the annotation at the end screen. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me on FTD Facts and I'll see you guys next time. I really love the FTD Facts channel because they bring to light what some of us don't know. Maybe you guys know them, but I didn't. That's why I said reacting, when we're reacting, we should be more open-minded because we come across a lot of information and this was wonderful information I'm learning. And from this list, I think I only knew two, Yusuf and um, Khalid Yassin. So, if you guys have, I really don't have anything to say, but if you guys have um, videos or reactions from these other people that he mentioned, let me know and I'll be more than glad to um, get your links and actually react to them and their works and what they have to say about the entire religion as a whole. So uh, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next reaction video. you